Hey friends, sorry about the video quality in this video. I used the wrong camera settings. Thanks. Enjoy. G'day friends, my name is Elvis. I need a new name for this friggin' show, guys. You probably heard already, but uh, Epic Games had a big mega sale and all of these publishers, all their games have just vanished. So I've got some actual details here on what happened with this whole situation. Let's jump into it. So we got some more details around this controversy and what actually happened here. So I'm going to break it down for you. So some of the games include Vampire the Masquerade, the pre-order for Borderlands 3, Hades from Supergiant Games. Apparently, these publishers were not aware that there was going to be a mega sale and have their freaking games discounted on the store. Let me give you some more context. <laughs> so I'm not a big fan of over-exaggerating stories. The truth is Epic Games were giving a $10 discount off pretty much any game over $15 or so. But the catch is Epic Games were going to eat that loss. So the actual publishers, they weren't going to lose any money. Epic Games was going to take the hit. The director of publishing strategy at Epic Games, his name's Sir. Sergi Galyonkin, Sergi Galyonkin, uh, the so anyway, the director put out a little bit of a comment. He said, um, number one, anyone who managed to buy the game uh, at a discount will receive it at a discount. So if you did buy one of these games, don't worry guys, you're still going to get the same price. It's not going to disappear in your inventory. Number two is all these games will be back on the Epic Store. They're not just banished. Forever. Number three, we fully compensate the discount to the publisher and they do not lose any money, which are uh, what I stated earlier on. And then this is number four, the publisher was informed in advance about the sale mechanism and was aware of its conditions. But then later on, he goes to update this and to say, okay, regarding point four, I was sure that Paradox were aware of the sale mechanism. After a little bit of investigation, it turns out that I was wrong. So there seems to be a bit of a communication breakdown here. Let's talk about why this even makes a difference, why this is important, considering that you know, Epic Games were going to take the sale loss. Price is a really big factor when it comes to marketing games, guys. Let me give you an example of this. If you have two games that are identical, they're exactly the same game, but one's priced differently, most gamers are going to assume that the more expensive game is a better title. So this wraps up into branding. So most gamers assume that, you know, a $60 RPG is most likely going to be a better experience than say a $30 RPG. Technically, this is confirmation bias. This is a cognitive bias. A lot of people equate money to quality, especially when it comes to video games. <laughs> There you go, guys. What do you think about that? A little bit of a miscommunication. If they've got so many people selling so many games, it's going to be pretty tough to communicate to everyone. But at the same time, you know, it's kind of their job to do that. They're providing the service. So, I don't know. Okay, so this is a game that's kind of near and dear to my heart and this channel anyway. Bit of an unpopular opinion. And that's Lords of the Fallen. Okay, if you don't know what it is, it's basically a Dark Souls clone. You know, it's good graphics, good game, I like it. But it seems like, um, yeah, if you're a fan of the game like me, I don't think we're going to be able to be playing Lords of the Fallen 2, which has been in development, by the way, for a long time. I don't think we're going to see that game anytime soon. Let's jump over to some, uh, some more controversy going on with this one. If you didn't know, CI Games are in a partnership with Defiant Studios, who's a New York-based company. Defiant Studios has been dropped. They've dropped them from development of Lords of the Fallen 2, and they've decided to finish the game in-house. CI Games go on to say that, quote, it was inadequate execution by Defiant of a key work stage. But David Gridgens, the founder of the recently dropped Defiant Studios, pushed back and made his own statement. He said, we categorically disagree with the portrayal of Defiant Studios made by CI Games. Anyway, he goes on to say that the team that was working on Lords of the Fallen 2 with CGI Games and their project was exceedingly talented developers whose work we fully stand behind. Uh, so straight away, guys, this is a good sign from a head of a studio not throwing his team under the bus and taking responsibility and saying, nah, 
I care about my developers. They're exceedingly good. You guys got it wrong, not us. Just to lay this story to rest, Defiant Studios who did get dropped, you know, they've worked on Far Cry 5, Just Cause 3, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. So, you know, they've got their foot in the door. A bit of controversy there. So that's unfortunate. It just means fans like me of Lords of the Fallen might not get this game as soon as we would like. So, uh, yeah, quick shout outs to Overwatch. Three years old today. Pretty hard to imagine. Just want to give them a quick shout out. It's three years old, guys. They've got uh, some new merch to celebrate the event. I know some people might froth Blizzard Entertainment merchandise, but um, yeah, I might even get my greedy little grubby gross hands. That was weird. That was weird that I said that, right? Why don't I, why don't I describe my hands like that? I'd like to uh, participate in the apparel as well. I might pick up a, a new shirt, but as you can see, I kind of just rock the... I don't like to wear brands too much. And I'm also, you know, a full-grown adult. I don't really think it's a good idea to walk around in a diva shirt. But uh, anyway, go and go and pick some up. That's just me. All righty, let's talk about some action RPG stuff. Man, I want to talk more and more about action RPGs. It's been pretty lackluster in the last two years regarding action RPGs. So I haven't been able to talk about it that much. That's going to change today, my friends, today and change right now grinding gear games chris wilson a lot of you are familiar with him if you like path of exile he recently released a hour-long video at the 2019 gdc going into huge depth about how they design path of exile to be played forever this to me is an incredible insight into how they think about this game and where it's going further but some of the stuff that he showed off was actually incredible one of the things that he showed off is this hours played graph the crazy part about this graph is its huge increase all the way up to 2018 he also states that there was no trickery here he didn't include the stats from china because they did move into china he didn't like squish them stats in or anything like that this is how big and how quick this game is continually growing i honestly thought that you know i know obviously know that part of exile is a huge freaking game and everyone who does play it loves it i honestly thought the hours on this graph would have been the exact reverse not because the game's bad not because of the direction they're going or anything like that just because of the nature of life cycles of games you know the older they get the less popular they tend to get path of exile is clearly an outlier here they're kicking goals right now which is great the thing that i really liked about this is chris talks about his love for diablo 2 and how he sunk his 20s into it and how you know, eventually when he kind of got bored of the game he looked into other action rpgs like titan quest and it didn't quite translate over. It wasn't as fun as Diablo 2. So he talks about how he managed to recreate that feeling in Path of Exile. The link's below for the whole entire video if you want to watch it. It's a biggie, but it's definitely worth watching, especially if you're developing your own action RPG or just a diehard fan of this game. Okay, so remember NetEase? Probably, you know, you might still be lingering around there somewhere in your brains, but if you don't know who they are or you've forgotten, it's this massive Chinese company that are in partnership with Blizzard Entertainment to make Diablo Immortal. They just announced that they're teaming up with Marvel for their next gaming project. They also talk about other projects as well outside of gaming, but it seems like there's a lot of demand for big companies to outsource cheaper development costs from China. Okay, the very last story for today, PlayStation 5. Okay, the last story for today, Sony had a press meeting in Japan and Takashi Mo Mokizuki, uh, sorry Takashi, I, I just brutaled your last name, uh, sorry dude. Anyways, from the Wall Street Journal, he dropped a video of the Sony conference showing off the new PlayStation 5's loading speed. And they've got a direct one-to-one -one comparison with the PlayStation 4. Pro. So the video shows off a free roaming camera just cruising through Spider-Man on both consoles side by side like I mentioned and oh my god the PlayStation 5 looks blistering fast when you compare it to the PlayStation 4 but you know guys some things worth noting here is Spider-Man was developed for the PlayStation 4 you know and the PlayStation 4 was released in 2013 so you know it's six years old now so this would kind of be like comparing the PlayStation 4 to the PlayStation 3, you know, of course it's going to be 
you know, a lot better, uh, especially if the PlayStation 5 is going to be around for, you know, its six year life cycle into the future. Sorry to, you know, be the buzzkill here, but that's just kind of putting it in perspective. But it is cool to see just how much better the PlayStation 5 will perform compared to its predecessor anyway. It's looking really, really good so far, especially with the rumored 8K resolution. Oh man, it's actually looking pretty cool. Just remember, I'm looking for a new name for the show. Please, if you want to participate, um, chuck out some names for me. I'm sure they're all going to be shit, but there's going to be a couple of good ones in there. I believe in you guys. Help me name the show, uh, or you can just have some fun and troll me. I'll see you in two days. I'm on a two day schedule. I would do it every day, but there's not enough cool news shit for me to two finger punch about. It takes fucking two days. It takes two days for the good stuff, for the juice to come out so I can lather you all with my fantastic sweetness. <laughs> see you next time, friends.